Oh, there you go, there's the move. Eight riders in the breakaway group. At the front we have four. Daniel Gradek of Team One Pro Cycling. 26 years of age, four victories so far in his career. Good job, everybody. Well done. Just do a nice steady hour with the lads. You're basically just trying to stop your body from seizing up a little bit. You know, if you start the race after a day off, you might feel a bit blocked and seized up. So you do a couple of openers just to get the legs going, loosen them up. What bike are you riding this weekend? The last two races I've done, I felt good on this bike, so don't want to change the winning team. Congratulations as well, you've completed a short video clip without swearing. <laughs> it's not finished <laughs> One of the most underappreciated things about bike racing is the amount of work that goes into the team before and after. For example, for mechanics like Milan, how easy do you find the riders to deal with, really? What are they like? Are they like um, footballers? Well, not like the footballers, for sure. Uh, they don't cry so much. <laughs> this is endless, and it raining. Within the team, we've got plenty of strength and depth. I think um, that goes without saying, really, but I also think we're quite versatile. We've got guys who can climb proper climbs and we've got guys who can roll with the rollier races and the punchier races and obviously we've got sprinters as well. Plenty of horsepower in the two Polish guys there. So I think that versatility is the key really. So the reason why I love being with One Pro Cycling is just the fact that it's all a big family. You know, when we go racing, it's, you know, we're all racing together. And first time I, I feel like a big family. You know, if one of us win, we all win. Having Boardman on board is just phenomenal. You know, having a sponsor that is this involved in our day-to-day -day racing, if they follow it like they're on the edge of the seats watching the races and they're, you know, and you know they are because they're, they're tweeting immediately after or, you know, during even. It's hugely impressive and hu hugely inspiring. And Chris, you know, he, he's one of the reasons I got into cycling in the first place. Even now with the team, you know, and all the things they're trying to do with the Performance Center and I think it's a great concept and, and a great partnership. What you get is instead of just being given a load of frames and being told, right, we'll, we'll see you in 12 months when you need a, another batch. You know, we have a relationship with Boardman and they get feedback from us, we get feedback from them, any issues, any positives. And I think that kind of relationship is beneficial for the rider as well as the manufacturer. It feels like your opinion's valid and that what you're doing is working towards a bigger goal. Of the two bikes that we've been given so far, I think I actually prefer the SLR a little bit. Probably comes down to me just being a bit more traditional. I've always ridden lower profile wheels, more traditional frames, but there's one thing I've noticed with the air is that it's faster. I still prefer the SLR just because of the comfort of it. It, it suits my body type and riding style perfectly. And I'm racing the aero bike just because I prefer how it feels. It feels faster. A few things to keep me in the back of the vehicle. A uh, couple of spare wheels. We have a couple of spare ones here. We have uh, two pairs in the back. As where I sit. As well as that, we have some of the bottles for the riders, anything they want, they can get. And also, each rider has these wet bags, and in the wet bags they've got bits and pieces like arm warmers, leg warmers, jackets. Where's my ice sock? Where's my ice sock? I'm too hot, I'm too hot. With the boys diet, it actually starts quite a few weeks out from here. It's about them feeling relaxed and knowing what they're doing. So I get them to practice the food they're gonna have on the bike during the race. They practice their carb load. They practice the food they're gonna have after the race as well. So they know exactly what they're doing, what they're having and why. On the day of the race, like this morning, a really simple breakfast, something that they have regularly um, and just top up their liver glycogen stores. Make sure they're feeling good and they've got the carbohydrate there for their performance. You never give them a 10, there's always room for improvement. We're here at the Team Hotel, ready to roll out for <laughs> stage one of the Tour de Yorkshire. Woo! 11 o'clock will arrive. Once you signed on, then about 12 o'clock for warm up, and then 12.35, the first stage starts. This will do for today, multitude. 
So we've just had the UCI guys come over and check our bikes. It's a, it's a modified iPad and they just check the bottom bracket area. I think it's electromagnetic resonance imaging that they use to detect any kind of anomalies with metal presence around the bottom brackets. But anything that's unusual in this area gets a red flag and then they start checking more deeply for motors essentially, which is, we've seen a few instances of that. All good though with our lot, so uh, on we go. I think every day could be very dangerous if it's ridden aggressively at certain points in the race. There's going to be no point over the next few days where you can sit back and have a chat with your mates. Tom, good luck. Thanks very much for joining us. All right, pleasure. Cheers. Back right. to you in the studio. Exposure for the team on an event like this is massive. You've got good TV coverage day after day. We're here to animate the race a little bit as well. We're not here just to kind of just ride around in the peloton. We do want to put people up the road, but we also want to put people in the finish as well. I'd just say to people, like, even if you're not remotely interested in cycling, come out and watch because you will, you will enjoy the day. When the riders come through and the caravan and the convoy and everything, it's magic really. Isn't it? I would like Camille, Pete, Christian and Josh to rotate for that break. There's no four guys better than sniffing out those moves, knowing when the right move to go. We're just about to set off on stage one of the Tour of Yorkshire 2017 now. It's going to be a hard day out in the Yorkshire Moors. The third edition of the Tour of Yorkshire, a stage between Bridlington and Scarborough, 173.5 miles, 133 riders at the start, 133.